Why can't I start recording? There we go. All right. Uh, so welcome, folks. It is February 26, 2021. This is the Agriculture and Ecosystem Subcommittee of the Vermont Climate Council. Um, we're going to meet for about an hour today. Um, just run quickly through the agenda and then committee members can introduce themselves. Um, we're going to do some brief introductions. We're going to get some updates from Jane Lazorchek, uh, the, the director of the Global Warming Solutions Act. Then we're going to spend the bulk of the afternoon um, looking at the folks interested in joining our subcommittee and trying to come up with a, a slate of recommended additional members then you know we should just touch briefly on kind of logistics going forward in the next couple of weeks then there'll be some time at the end for public comment um i'd ask the folks who are members of the public you know we're happy you're here if you could um you know hold your comments in, until the end that would be great so i am uh one of the co-chairs my name is billy coster with the agency of natural resources and uh I'll hand it to you, fellow co-chair Abby, to introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. Abby Course, um, fellow co-chair. Uh, I farm down here in Whitingham, Vermont with my folks. We have a certified organic dairy with a uh, herd of about 55. And onward to the content, or do we want to do, do we need to do introductions at the beginning of every meeting? Is that helpful for I think since it looks like there are a lot of members of the members public, of the public. Today, maybe at least at a minimum for the, the committee members to kind of introduce themselves. So fellow committee members, I would love it if you could just do a brief intro to the um, public who's here. Thanks. I'll jump in and then pass it off to somebody. Uh, hi, everyone. Lauren Oates. Um, the climate and energy policy manager at the Nature Conservancy and former state employee for six plus years. Uh, excited to be here. And Ryan. Thanks, Lauren. Uh, Ryan Patch with the Vermont Agency of Agriculture, Food and Markets in the Water Quality Division. <clears throat> I'm here on behalf of uh, Secretary of Agriculture, Anson Tevitz. And I'll pass it off to Sophia. I'm here trying to turn my camera on. Um, I'm Sophia. I'm the youth member. Uh, I live in Hyde Park, um, still in school, that fun stuff. Um, and I'm happy to be here too. Pass it on. Great, thanks. And we do have a number of State of Vermont employees here who are generously supporting the work of um, our subcommittee. Um, and maybe I'll just kind of list them off for folks. Um, we've got Alexandra Kosiba from the Department of Forest Parks and Recreation, Bob Pop from the Department of Fish and Wildlife, Marley Roop from the Department of Environmental Conservation, and I believe Alex DePillis from the Ag Agency. And I don't know if I, I missed anybody. Great. And, um, you know, you all, State of Vermont staff, you know, thank you very much. You know, I just want to apologize in advance that we are still really focusing on the, the basic logistics of our committee and, you know, are not intentionally ignoring you all. We, we appreciate you participating in these meetings. And after this one, I think we'll be in a much better position to kind of get a good game plan, talk with you in more detail about how we envision engaging with you all, hearing from you all about uh, what, what you think is helpful and you know i would encourage you and if if the rest of the subcommittee is okay with this i would encourage you to kind of share your thoughts as we're talking about potential um additional members if you have experience working with or have anything you think would be helpful for our our um, deliberations great and it looks like so i don't know abby anything else you want to add at this point no, I would second the gratitude to all agency staff. Thank you so much. Um, I was just seeing if Jane is here. I think she is now. Yeah, no, I'm here. I, I just have a really good black eye. And so I was keeping my video off. <laughs> Are your kids on break too? <laughs> yeah, hence why I have a black eye. <laughs> I figured it was something like that. <laughs> 
Um, so welcome, Jane, and your black eye. Uh, no. Yes. Um, we're going to turn it over to Jane now to do, of course, I don't have the agenda right up in front of me, but to do sort of a brief check in as to where we're at. Yes. Yes. OK, before, thank you, Jane. Before, before we move on, and this is something we need to deal in better, dial in better before our next meeting. But Miss Oates, would you mind taking notes for us again? Oh, shoot. Yes. Yeah, I, yeah, that's fine. I can do it. Thank yeah. you, Lauren. All right, cool. Thanks. Take it away, Jane. Well, that actually teased me up really well um, for the first thing I was going to talk about and recognize. Um, I just I wanted to and I have been doing this for the other subcommittees, just recognize um, both the administrative burden of the subcommittees <clears throat> as well as the um, adherence to process and protocol with open meetings um, and just acknowledge that Melissa and I are working together on sort of a cheat sheet around process um, and administrative help um, and hope to have that available to all of the subcommittees next week. So sort of a recognition of like, when do you have to have your agenda in and um, in order to have it posted to be um, compliant with the open meeting rules, as well as providing clear templates for minutes um, and agendas for everybody to use. So that that's forthcoming. Um, also recognizing that um, a little bit of stuff that will feed into that is we have made a selection for the fa final facilitation, the facilitator who will guide us through the whole process. Um, we're going to bring that forward to the steering committee on Monday, but um, we had a review and ranked committee that Billy was part of. Thank you for the agency. Um, there was a clear front runner, which won't be a surprise that it is uh, CBI who's been working with us um, ongoing right now, as well as has facilitated Maine, Maine's climate action plan. So they have a lot of experience. So it was nice that across all areas that the proposal was ranked for, that they did um, clearly come in highest um, on all areas. So that's clear for us. We'll make that recommendation to the steering committee on behalf of the Climate Council on Monday. Um, and they'll be able to provide some capacity. And, and that's something as you move into implementation after finalizing your subcommittee membership, you guys can be thinking about how best to tap into the facilitator because that facilitator will be available to your subcommittees for meetings. Um, so that's one. Um, there's also a lot of um, continuing kind of um, discussion around how best to, uh, to capture minutes. Um, and I'll just say that to date, um, the guidance I've been getting from Secretary Young as chair has been high level minutes, not de not please don't do tons of detail, no verbatim, um, really highlighting where action is taken and where consensus is reached. Um, and then where what I might just reflect on is where there's been a little bit of point of contention is how to deal with public comment. Um, uh, the feeling has been to this point is to recognize that the minutes are attached with a video of this meeting so um oh wait and we're not record oh you are recording <laughs> um so that there's no need to really go into extensive detail in the minutes there so um okay so cheat sheets coming the rfp on facilitation hopefully we'll be negotiating and finalizing the contract next week after um the steering committee meets on monday um and then i'll just also comment on um, the RFP for outreach is out um, also, and that will close next week. So hopefully those two things are coming um, online fairly quickly. And then um, with your completion of, nom of selection of your nominees, hopefully you'll be able to move forward in thinking about contractual services around uh, technical services, which we hope to advance through RFP one RFP or multiple RFPs at the end of the month of March. Um, so things are moving at a fast clip, but they seem to be falling in line well. Um, and so you guys are the last committee to select nominees um, to to finalize your nominees for membership. And so um, the steering committee, there has been a lot of cross pollination with co-chairs to ensure that there hasn't been sort of double picking of the same person. Um, and so I'm happy knowing uh, the majority of all of those nominees that have been selected by other subcommittees now to help in any way I can as you go through your discussion today with your final membership ideas. So I'll, I'll let you guys take it away because that should really be the focus and bulk of your meeting. So happy to help or answer any questions if people have it. 
Thank you so much, Jane. That is such helpful information to have. Those cheat sheets, particularly for people such as myself, will be so helpful. Thank you. Oh, trust me, it's not just you, so don't worry. <laughs> It'll be helpful for me. <laughs> so thank you. Great, great. I'm glad we're all in this boat together. Yeah. Um, so friends, onward to the bulk of the conversation. Yay, nay. Abby, do you want me to? I'm happy to share my screen with our short list if that would be helpful for folks. I'm suspicious it might be if you don't mind doing that. And I also, assuming that nobody has like, I don't know, construction going on in the background, I would say that those of us on the committee that if you want to stay unmuted to sort of facilitate a more natural conversation, I'm fine with that. That sometimes helps a little bit. Just a random thought. All right, let me see if I can find this. Okay, please let me know when you can see that. Okay. And if you need it bigger, smaller, uh, just let me know. <clears throat> okay, so it looks like um, the filtering process delivered about 55, 60 potential individuals to us, 59. Um, it looks like there was about nine that were unanimously scored as high by the, the members, and then another group that um, of about five that had a high ranking as well. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I will say that that doesn't disqualify anyone on this list. I think that was a screening exercise we all went through. So certainly if there's other folks um, further down the list that um, people are interested in perhaps joining us, um, I, I think it, it's all fair game. Um, and Jane, if you're still with us, I don't know if you have any suggestions on how this might have worked in some of the other subcommittees. Yeah, that I was be my question, Billy. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's varied, um, but I will s say that you know, like if it, I think that um, like the Just Transitions Committee seemed to be the one that hit it out of the park. So I'll just suggest what they did, but that was homework ahead of time. They sort of split up the unanimously high amongst e the group and then made contact with them all to see if they even wanted to serve and if they had the capacity. And so they did some homework ahead of time. Um, but I would encourage you um, to just speak frankly, if you know the people who are un unanimously high, and if you su suggest um, both um, from the criteria that we have, as well as you know what you know of them if the, in their capacity to give, um, if they would be able to step up and serve, right? You know, so I don't have any other, it, otherwise it was simply, and then I will say like the cross sector group, which had quite a big list of unanimously high, as you can imagine, um, mm -hmm. Richard and Peter just vetted that ahead of time and they, they put four forward and there were no objections. Um, and then they had a substantive conversation and um, added one or two, but agreed on what Richard and Peter suggested. So I, mean, I think you guys have a, a solid list here and it's not if you focus first and foremost on unanimously high. And and while the while it is due today, I, I think there's no harm in recognizing that um, if you have a suite of more than your allotted number that feels comfortable and you, wa you wanna parse those out amongst you all to call and check in with over the weekend and turn it in on Monday or, or at your earliest convenience, I, I think that's all fine too. Okay, so just a couple questions. Can you all still see the spreadsheet? I can't tell if I'm still sharing it. You are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's Billy, one question. would you be able to scroll over um, to the right a little bit so we can see more of the experience? That's a little cut off. Yeah. And I, thank you. Um, yeah, there you go. 
So I guess I've got just a couple of questions and thoughts. One is it would be helpful, Jane, if you could remind us of how many additional people we're looking for. And the other point is that I think we all kind of shared previously like the kind of areas that we thought we'd like to see additional capacity and expertise on the committee. And I and Abby's got that right there. So maybe she can share that with us. And um, while I think we sure, certainly should look at the unanimously, unanimously high, I know that there are folks elsewhere on the list who also do fit into some of those categories. Um, mm -hmm. So we shouldn't feel too bound by our initial screening. So again, you, there's five of you right now and you're shooting for eight to 12. So three to seven additional members. Okay. Yeah, which is very varied. I mean, I think that you have some excellent capacity here amongst your state staff that are here that bring a lot of technical expertise to this group. Um, so I might err on a, a smaller side with this group because you have a lot of capacity in your state staff, um, but I, I could be wrong in that assumption um, that I, I might be missing something that I'm not seeing. So it'd be great to review that um, list that you have, but just for ease of coordination um, and setting up meetings, it's, you know, Obviously, the more more you have, the more laborious that becomes. Right. Can I make one recommendation and one comment before we jump in? Of course. Um, so the a comment I want to make that I think has been made a couple of times by several people, and not just in this subcommittee, but elsewhere. But but for the record and for the sake of the process, just a reminder to everyone that those not selected today are not necessarily not part of the process at all. It's such a small group of people um, to be an effective an effective subcommittee that we're still going to rely. I hope that we rely quite heavily on a lot of these really brilliant minds in the future to come in as targeted ex targeted outreach to experts or people with significant lived experience. Um, so I just want to make sure that we all remember that. Um, and then my recommendation might be since we didn't do the good work that just transitions did or i didn't do the good work that just transitions did to reach out to those that came in as unanimously high or high that we create our like our suite of recommendations that we can submit hopefully by the end of this meeting but maybe identify like two or three alternates yeah. and then over the weekend reach out to our, our first tier list and if any of them have changed their mind or didn't even know they were nominated uh which is possible um, that we'll have those, we'll have a, a, an alternate list that we can push up. Does that make sense? Well said, Lauren. Yep. Okay. Yep. That sounds great. So just a quick, I apologize. As I said before, my kids are on break this week. So my mind is a little more scattered than normal, which isn't <laughs> saying much, but here we are. Um, it looks to me like the consensus of the committee was that certainly somebody with an expertise in soils was of high importance. Um, also, the other one that came up quite clearly was um, somebody with food systems, food security expertise, um, as in a, and also, um, or ag economics was another thing, um, representatives from uh, the BIPOC community, indigenous and, um, Black or migrant representation as well, and um, uh, forest products and um, mm -hmm. carbon market expertise as well was another one that came up. Just to oh, and land management. So that was sort of they're actually like all of us actually were fairly aligned in our thinking as to where we felt like additional expertise or prioritization needed to be brought in, which is great. I love that we're all. Myself, mm -hmm. Allie. Oh, she's going to speak to it. Good. I was going to speak for you, Allie. <laughs> hey, well, thank you. Well, I, yeah, I think, um, and Billy put that in his email. I, I think that I can cover carbon markets fairly well. And as we need more technical details, like we could bring someone in. I'm, I'm pretty involved in that. Um, Jane and I are in a group where we're looking at this for state land, but also I, I'm involved with the U.S. Climate Alliance group looking in a regional carbon market, so that I kind of have my fingers in a lot of lot of uh, efforts there. So I I would say that that maybe isn't uh, as big of a priority. I would I would say the same thing. This is Alex in a different way. Um, I've been studying those markets too, specializing in ag and private sector carbon trading, 
Um, and so, you know, one way we could handle it, Ali and others, is that we could invite some of these people in, especially the people that are doing the, the private transactions that are now starting to happen and, um, you know, and, and get get a briefing that way. Because there's a lot of people on this list, but they're not really private sector people. So that would be great at some point to have that perspective. And we can we can bring it in, I think, rather than having to have it on the committee itself. I would tend to agree with that assessment. And thank you so much to both of you for being willing to bring that expertise forward. Does anybody else have thoughts on that specifically? No, good. Okay. Good awesome. Um, so I I'm still not sure where exactly to start this. Um, so I would we all, like we all, I guess I would ask a clarifying question for Alex and 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 Ali. Um, notwithstanding your expertise, do you think that we would still benefit from someone who has a real interest in kind of agricultural soils? I think we all said soil scientists, someone like that would be helpful. I don't know if that's a I don't I'm, I don't know these things, so that may be a different suite of expertise than you both possess, or it may be the same. So I just don't know the answer to that. For me, it's different. I, I think we definitely need, I. it seems to me, somebody who's pretty versed in soil science itself. One of the things we're probably going to have to do at some point, I think, is really look at what is the potential here. You know, given our soils, what, what, how many tons of carbon could we pull out of the atmosphere into the ground? And that's going to take a soil scientist. And that work is starting to happen now in Vermont um, with some great work that um, Alyssa White is going to be doing this coming year. However, what I think we will need to bring in as as non subcommittee member is the private sector perspective on the trading and or climate alliance kind of stuff. Yep, I agree with Alex on that. I, I do think that uh, soils is is going to be a big area of potential. And and I, yeah, I don't have a lot of expertise, particularly agricultural soils is not my expertise. So I can I, I I'm curious with you both talking about this with Kat Buxton. I don't know her. Um, She's she amazing. Seems, she, OK, there you go. But um, the other one that I had meant to nominate myself and like had talked a little bit about with um, Sec with Secretary Moore and others is Tom Villers. And I don't know if he ever just, I don't think he probably never got nominated by anybody. And, but I just throw him out there that even if he hasn't been nominated him or somebody like him, but if Kat has it and can do it, then that's great. Um, may I ask who Tom Villers is? Sorry, pardon my yeah, ignorance. He's a, he's a teacher at UVM um, and just an amazingly passionate very passionate soil scientist and ecologist and he sort of ties it he, he's whole picture soils which I, I've always thought was really cool. He worked for NRCS for a number yeah. of years and has recently retired like in the last two or three years I believe uh, but he's yeah he's a real real knowledgeable about soils and just good to work with. Should we re reach out to him or because did you say he hasn't like been on the list? So should we reach out to him? Uh, maybe he or could is be that like too late. To that if you guys right. know and want to. Mm -hmm. I think I'd feel more comfortable with him being an alternate since we have a couple of mm -hmm. soil science experts that mm -hmm. were nominated a couple of them more than once through the, the yeah. actual process. So I would I would feel I would feel more comfortable with him as an alternate. I, yeah, I mean, and looking at his soil, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Ryan. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and looking at um, the depth of knowledge we have from uh, soil scientists who were ranked unanimously high, um, I'm thinking of uh, Alyssa White and, and Joshua Faulkner. Um, I did speak with both of them in advance of this meeting, and Alyssa has uh, the time to commit, and, and Joshua, while he would like to, um, participate. He's concerned. He's got a lot of field work he has to do this spring, and, and there's a big ask of this co committee. So between the two, uh, Alyssa would uh, likely be the soil scientist and agroecologist that could, um, of course, if, if Tom is now at UVM, could definitely interface with him, and we can invite Tom to participate in that. Um, but I think that those two represent a, a good, uh, very extensive depth of knowledge in both uh, soil science and um, interface with climate change and agroecology solutions or agroecological solutions. 
Thanks for doing that, Ryan. Let's do. Can we agree then to move forward with Alyssa as our first person? She was unanimously ranked high, nominated three times. Ryan's confirmed she has the time and energy to devote to this. Yes, yeah. I would. I, I was actually looking at the same two people. I would say yes, and I would um, also love to tap Kat to be brought in as expertise at some point. Um, she has deep and really meaningful relationships with farmers on the ground, and I think that's going to be really important as well. Um, but I am I'm good with putting Alyssa forward. I would absolutely second that. What you just said about Kat <clears throat> has deep knowledge with the soils and being able to explain it in connection with with farmers and having her provide that is um, uh, however you just described that that role. I think that would be fantastic to include her in that way. Yeah, her she just has a really great holistic view of sort of the entirety of the issue. I feel <clears throat> sweet. One down. Woo. Okay. Um, I wanted to bring up uh, Olivia Pena. It looks like made it down a couple of of. Um, I think she was a couple below Ellen Kaler. I, I do feel quite strongly that um, she would be an amazing addition. Um, I recommended her. She began Relief Collective. She's a black farmer. Um, and also worked with SNAP and Three Squares Vermont prior to starting Relief, I believe. I have not, I, um, Keisha and I, Keisha Ram and I have spoken about her. I, I have not specifically reached out to her to see if she has capacity, but if she does, I do think that she would bring a really incredible, um, perspective that is, uh, going to be necessary as we move forward as Susanna said, you know, our climate migration patterning and things like that is that Vermont is going to get blacker and browner. And so I think that that's a critical voice to bring into the discussion. Welcome, any thoughts? We would absolutely uh, second that, Abby. Um, from a short list of discussions within the agency, even though she was, you know, just below the, 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 the ranking that was proposed there, um, the question might be her, her capacity and availability. I understand she's involved in, in a lot of uh, other uh, initiatives, but absolutely would second um, uh, nominating or uh, encouraging us to consider uh, Olivia for the, um, the subcommittee membership. Would second yes, question. I'm I'm a little bit, I'm suspicious we may need to worry about that with capacity with a lot of the members from our BIPOC community, and I want to be really cognizant of that, but I also want to ensure that like you're saying we're uh, uh, providing the opportunity if the if the capacity and the willingness is there and and if not perhaps she's somebody that again we could bring in at a later point to have as a um you know to discuss some of these realities moving forward sophia or billy any thoughts sounds great to me yeah I don't... No, I, yeah same. yeah lauren sounds great cool Okay. Um, I would like to elevate um, the ecosystems side of the Ag and Ecosystems Subcommittee now and recognize that there's, we've got a lot of Ag experience and expertise here, uh, lived or otherwise. Um, we have a soil person now. Uh, Olivia sounds fantastic. I really hope she can, um, we can find time to have her on the subcommittee. I do want to, I'm going to put a big case in for David Mears joining, uh, who has been ranked unanimously high and can bring the, elevate the ecosystems piece. You know, Audubon focused largely on the flora and fauna of our state and also has a lot of experience and, um, education in the the riparian and um, the fluvial dynamics of our state and I want to make sure that we're that we're elevating the really significant role that our floodplains and river corridors play in our ag and ecosystems so uh, I'm going to put a plug in for him to join as well I have spoken to him he does have the time and interest as well anybody else want to offer thoughts I've worked with David in the past, and I think he would be a, an asset to our group. I mean, if he's got the interest and willingness to join us, I, I think 
That'd be good. I would second yeah, I both read... of those thoughts. Yeah, same. And David, good. David is also incredible in that his um, his understanding of how agriculture plays into all of those systems is really immense and very thoughtful. And I think that that will be a boon as well. So great. So now we've hit three, so we're done, right? No. <laughs> well, I guess the one place we still identified a need was around food systems. Food. Um, and I know, you know, Ellen Keller is, is on our list just off of the kind of high ranking and she obviously has a lot of depth and touch points in that space. You know, I've worked with her a little bit directly, not a ton, but she seems like she would be someone to help with that role if if she was available, but you all may have other thoughts or, or better suggestions. Billy, I, I spoke with Ellen and she's she's very interested. Um, she said that Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund would want to be part of it, whether it was her or um, the Farm to Plate Network coordinator, um, Jake Claro, I think Claro is his last name. She said either of them would be uh, thrilled to be part of the process. So I would I would love to see um, I'd love to see them at the table too. I have personally never worked with Ellen, but Jake is really incredible, so thoughtful. Um, mm -hmm. The other question I have is whether NOFA could serve sort of in that way as well. I, it was Megan, I, ta I spoke with Maddie. I don't think Maddie has the capacity, but Megan Browning, who's the farmer services person I know does. It's not the same as Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund and their position in food systems, but they certainly do interface with um, those systems really intensely. So that's another thought there. Yeah, I was thinking of Maddie, but you just said it sounds like she doesn't have the time. So, well, Megan, that that's well, it's sort of an Ellen Jake situation with Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund. It's the same with NOFA. They've yeah, you know, Megan is the person that they feel like has the capacity, and I've I've worked with Megan pretty closely, and um, I I think she's incredible and up for the task. Um, but either she or Jake, it you know. My sense is that those those two groups bring you know slightly different valuable assets to the conversation. So I don't I don't from my perspective I don't know that I want to be in either or. I think if. So sustainable Jobs Fund is interested in participating, we should take advantage of that. And if folks from NOFA are also interested, you know, I'd certainly be open to, you know, their participation if, if others thought that made sense. But I don't know that it's an either or for, from my perspective. Additional thoughts, anybody? I guess I would just offer that Vermont Sustainable Job Fund does have the forestry side of things too um, that NOFA doesn't capture. And that is one thing just to make a plug here of, yeah, that having a little, um, you know, the, the role of forests in this conversation is going to be huge and uh, forest and forest products are not, not super um, represented. Do we have anybody within this I will admit that as the farm and forest rep, although I steward forest land, I am certainly not, <laughs> you know, it's very different. And um, so I I know that, um, Ali, you had said that you were really thinking that somebody, either a logger or somebody that had um, biomass, you know, was relying on the amount of forest products and things like that. Do you, do you have any thoughts on that or... Um, it's just, it's not an area where I know people as well. So I'm welcome to any insight. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we have anybody on the list uh, that, that would is like a, a logger or a mill uh, operator, biomass, um, uh, Ben uh, Matchin. I have met him. I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he is a forester. Um, he He's down in the high ranking list. He's great and has been involved um, in, a, in a lot of efforts around the state, but I don't, I don't know that there was really anybody else um, that I flagged as having a lot of forestry or forest products uh, background in the list. But I, I actually can't access the, the link I had, so I, I don't quite mm -hmm. remember. 
I, I, I'll just second what Ali is saying. I, I think having an actual practicing forester or logger would is really important to this group. But it, it, and someone who's, I mean, some Red Start is an excellent forestry company. So I mean, active practicing forester. I don't know Ben personally either, though. But I, Red Start has a great reputation. So I am. Um... Uh, I'm, I nominated Ben Mation. He's he's really brilliant, and as far insofar as we have a small group who can have like cross uh, cutting in interests, he's in addition to being a, an active forester, he's also a sheep farmer. So he's he's doing both things. Um, I would I haven't touched base with him since submitting his name. Just haven't been able to connect with him. But I spoke with him. Um, when the climate council nominations were coming in and, and recommended that he put his name in for the full council. So he had interest at that time. I'm happy to touch base with him over the weekend and confirm, but I would want to make sure that we have, that we know that he might, it might not be, because I haven't had a chance to touch base with him, but he'd be great. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm, I'm comfortable kind of proceeding um, in that direction. And, and if not, we can think about another way to kind of fill that gap. And as far as actual, folks working in the production side, Ellie, I think that's a great suggestion, mill owner, et cetera. You know, maybe that's the sort of expertise we can pull in at, on a more ad hoc basis, kind of when we need those those perspectives on, in our work. Um, the other, if we're going to, oh man, there's so, so many. So how many are we at, right? can we just do a quick check? So, Quick checking of how many we got right now and who are they? Scribe, what, what do you got? We've, yeah, we've <laughs> confirmed. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll take that as a badge of honor, not derogatorily. Uh, we have oh, Alyssa. Honor, you're saving me from having to do it. We have yeah. Alyssa as our soil expert. Uh, we've agreed to bring on Olivia, uh, David Mears, and we still are waiting. I'm calling Ben Mation, but we're going to put him on our list, and then we still need to decide what we're doing as far as I, I couldn't tell if it, we said Jake, Jake Claro, or Megan, um, or if we're going to do both. And if we do both, then that puts us at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Um, if we do one, that puts us at ten. And then I'll and while I recognize that that leaves at least one or two extra spots. I do want to elevate Judy Dow as an opportunity. There were several of us that said we would like an indigenous uh, perspective here as the original land stewards of the land that we're on now. It would be really incredible if she had the time and capacity. And I see that she was nominated twice. I know that she was on the just transitions list. So Jane, I might rely on you because I haven't checked out that meeting notes yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check that real quick because it sounds very familiar. So hold on. Okay. I'll confirm. <laughs> Yes, I will put forward uh, a second to that and also that, um, well, I'm just going to say it, it feels deeply uncomfortable to engage in work around our land base here in what we now know as Vermont without including the original and still continuing land stewards of this place. So a, a, an, a Beneke representative in some capacity seems absolutely critical. Yes, Judy is a, a final. She was selected for the Just Transitions. Sorry. Can we put her on our list too and have the steering committee work that out on Monday? Sure. So there's also always another... the opportunity to let her decide. They also have six yeses and two that they're still doing like more outreach to garner their input. So I, I think that would be smart of you because if they end up getting two more yeses, they're they're likely going to have a lot. So and and they have some good representation from the BIPOC community already elsewhere. Brian. Thanks. Yeah, I um, separate person uh, to put on the table for consideration um, and, and our experience um, at, at the agency of ag um, and thinking about program recommendations or the implementation um, it you know very often for agricultural mitigation what we're going to I think what we'll be focusing on 
whether it's market-based or otherwise, is you know, how do we sequester carbon in soils? And generally you do that through a change in management practices. Technology is definitely one option, but when we uh, talk about how to adopt practices, um, you know, ensuring that um, you know, farmers and those that have been engaged most in making those management changes with regards to kind of the water quality uh, side of things, right? Focusing on cover crop, et cetera. Um, ensuring that we get feedback directly from that size, scale, and, and, and breadth of uh, farms throughout the state. Um, I spoke with John Roberts at the Champlain Valley Farmers Coalition, and that coalition is connecting with the Grand Isle Franklin Watershed uh, Alliance or, or Farmers Watershed Alliance and the Connecticut River Farmers Watershed Alliance as a representative speaking for kind of a, a statewide, um, you know, aggregation of those farmers that are currently engaged in implementing many of the practices who may want to see uh, for uh, agricultural, you know, climate mitigation strategies, focusing on cropland, um, you know, whether corn or, or otherwise, I think would be a, a real asset to ensure that um, we can hear from, you know, those that, you know, would maybe ask to undertake many of these changes um, to address the, the climate uh, mitigation side. So I would want to put uh, John's name uh, forward for consideration. John is amazing. His knowledge is really broad and his connection to the farming community is equally broad in terms of, you know, I bring forward a certain type of lived experience, but he is interfacing with farmers who are living a broad range of experiences and working in different systems and things. And he is deeply thoughtful and I think would be an, a very powerful interface into the farming community. And the, what's amazing about the watershed groups is that they, they formed of their own volition, um, which in terms of trying to bring farmers into being a part, an active part of the solution and taking, you know, active engagement and um, taking pride in their work in this regard and moving forward, that's a really powerful thing that hasn't happened in any other capacity really for the farmers to come together in that way. And so I think um, having an interface into the watershed alliances is, is, is deeply critical as well. Any other thoughts on that? Warren, Sophia, Billy? Sounds, I know John sounds well. really cool. He's a good guy. I'm just, I'm just starting to get a little bit mindful of numbers and I'm just kind of curious where we're at with our list. Um, subcommittee member Oates, <laughs> could you remind us where we stand on our count? We yeah. have too many. If we're, if we're in agreement on John Roberts, who is not the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, <laughs> then uh, we're at 13, if we're considering both Megan and Jake, uh, and Judy Dow, um, who again, I will make a strong recommendation that we get her and not just transitions because BIPOC voices should be embedded across the subcommittees, not just in one. Um, but we can have backups um, and maybe rediscuss the, the Jake and Megan dynamic. Yeah, that sounds good. And the only, you know, the only other name that you know I had been recommended from some folks in the agency was was Jeff Sanders, who I think has some real good um, practical experience in um, ag practices. And and Marley, I don't, I don't know if you're on, if you want to speak to that, um, but we may have that covered. Okay, I guess she's not. No, I am. It just okay. takes a minute to get over to the mute button. Um, yeah, um, Jeff certainly has a ton of expertise working on the ground with farmers and understands the realism of what can and can't happen in the field. Um, that said, John Roberts also has that ability. So. Great. Okay, thank you. So yeah, as long as as long as John has that um, kind of that piece covered, then I think maybe you know, I'm good with this 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 constellation. And yeah, you know, as we discussed, certainly we can pull in folks from other sectors, um, you know, especially forest processing is, is a thought as we get deeper into certain threads. Yeah, so it, it sounds to me like we're definitely going to want to, well, fingers crossed that Ben can come on board and then in addition forest uh, processing mills will be critical. And I would also say, um, 
three other names that I just think that ranked high that I would like to maybe bring in at other points. Ashlyn, I should point out that Ashlyn Bristle and Ashlyn McClurg are the same person. She goes by Ashlyn Bristle. Um, <laughs> so she, um, she is, she's a personal friend, but is also just bring some really incredible, very broad perspective. And so de definitely would be a voice that I think would be one that would be, um, a boon to bring in. And, um, Jill Arache and Jennifer Byrne are both really amazing folks. And I think that the Vermont Association of Conservation Districts is currently underutilized somewhat in the ways that it could assist in these, um, in the implementation strategies that the state uses moving forward for climate change policy. And so I would like to ensure that they are brought in at, um, different points to just make sure that we're we're utilizing their expertise and their um, capabilities as well that would be another thought that I have. Yeah, I think that that sounds great, Abby. And yeah, I'd encourage us all to think about those folks who are kind of on the proverbial bench that we can kind of pull in as needed um, and, you know, kind of keep up to speed and, and use as as assets um, at the ready when we need them. Would absolutely agree with that, Billy and Abby. Also, could we just talk for a second how exciting it is that there are all these amazing brains working on this stuff already? I mean, that's not nothing. Very lucky to live and work in Vermont. For sure. For sure. Um, okay, time check. It is 2.49. So uh, do I have to, like, make a motion? I'm so bad at this. Apologies to the public for my. It sounds like you have this on the list, which is what you're striving for, and there will be some homework action items. It sounds like over the weekend. Yeah, so I don't I don't think we need to formally act. Um, I think if, if we've got that list, you know, maybe when we're done, Lauren, um, if you're willing, you could kind of send it out to the group. And then uh, I, it sounded like folks had kind of self-identified their willingness to reach out to certain individuals. Um, but if there are any gaps there, um, we should nail that down so we can reach out to people. How do we, because we're, I think we're at 13, yes? I'm just wondering so. yes. how, how we want to resolve Jake Ellen versus Maddie Megan or whether that's a versus or what you know is there an action item on that if there is both of those uh Jake and Megan at least are people with whom I have a personal connection and I'm happy to reach out but um I need to know what I'm asking them first from my perspective if it's one or the other just given the the broader kind of charge of sustainable jobs fund and their ties into forestry I, I would prefer to see them be the kind of city member understanding the NOFA could certainly participate but that's that's just my my thinking I agree with Billy and um Abby you can reach out to Jake if you want I, I'm also happy to since I'm the one that nominated Ellen and, and have spoken to her about who would be the rep I'm almost certain it would be Jake but I'd want to confirm with both of them I am complete you know me I'm happy to delegate tasks so okay. Shout out to Jake. That's lovely. <laughs> okay, great. So I don't know if you want to just take a second. We we really need to have a meeting soon just to talk about general logistics and how we're going to operate going forward and et cetera. But Jane, looks like you want to say something. Nope. Okay. I was just nodding with you in agreement with you, Billy. Right. So um, do we want to, as a subcommittee, agree that we'll kind of pursue these individuals will um, kind of maybe communicate with with Abby and I what you find and then you know, that will be taken to the steering committee, but we should definitely find a time next week where we try to get together for an hour or so just to talk about logistics and how we engage with our generous staff support from the state of Vermont. Yes, that yeah, sounds, sounds wise. Good. Okay, cool. So let's um and I would encourage you to try to invite your additional members to that meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, novel concept. All right. Um, 
So maybe we'll we'll try to get something scheduled via email after after this this meeting. Um, a little because I'm just mindful. I don't want to dig into the the public comment period too much further. So. Yep, that makes sense. And then once you have that um, the additional membership on board, you could set a regular meeting, so you don't have to do that anymore. Yep, absolutely. Okay. All right, well, does anyone else on the subcommittee or on the, the staff want to raise anything before we shift over to public comment? All right, nice work, everybody. So we've got about um, seven or eight minutes for public comment. I know there's a, a number of folks who have joined us. Um, any of you who have the ability to raise, oh, let me stop sharing my screen first of all. <laughs> Any of you have the ability to raise your hand, which is um, uh, there's a little hand icon at the top window of the, the team's screen. If you're a member of the public and you'd like to speak, please raise your hand um, and we'll just kind of work through the list. If you don't have that function, just feel free to raise your voice right now and indicate your interest and we'll, we'll get you on the list. All right, going once. Okay, Zach, Zach, Zach Porter. Oh, I see your hand. Great. Hey, Thanks, Zach. Hey, everybody. Good to see you all. Um, I'm Zach Porter. I'm the Lake Champlain Lake Keeper at Conservation Law Foundation. Uh, live and work in Montpelier. Good to see you all. Thanks for your great work. Um, I know there's a tremendous amount of work that's already gone into this and, and a lot more ahead, and I'm grateful to you all for embarking. Um, I am here to uh, help from outside. I expect I'll be uh, watching a lot of these meetings and, and tagging along uh, the ride here. Um, and uh, just wanted to uh, first of all say thank you with, uh, again. Um, secondly, I wanted to thank uh, Laura Oates for her comment um, about making sure that um, you know there's there's strong representation on the committee focused on uh, what ecosystems, healthy functioning ecosystems can contribute um, to carbon storage, climate resilience, um, all of those good things that we derive from nature, clean air, clean water. Um, and, you know, not, I want to emphasize, you know, uh, not just quote unquote working lands as we kind of often refer to them um, here in New England, you know, those lands that we also derive raw products from, but I also want to make sure that there's a place in this conversation for wildlands, um, which, you know, the state of Vermont has committed to um, in a number of different uh, long range planning documents and have a lot to contribute as working landscapes, even if we don't always call them that. Um, and so uh, to the extent that there might be uh, candidates who have applied to be on the committee who bring that uh, perspective or those values, um, I hope that they will be given uh, close consideration. Um, and then if not necessarily seated on the committee. Um, I look forward to working with you all to make sure that some of those voices are, are uh, brought in, um, you know, in, 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 in expert capacities um, to inform the committee as it, you know, makes its uh, decisions and drafts its, its recommendations. Um, but that's all I wanted to share today and mostly just wanted to say hello and, and thank you and um, appreciate all of your, your good work. Great, thank you, Zach. Um, really? Yes, Ed, I hear your voice. All right, um, so Ed Larson, I think that's you. Feel free to take a couple minutes uh, with some comments. It is me, thank you very much. Good to see you, Billy. Uh, I'm Ed Larson. I'm a lobbyist. I represent the Vermont Forest Products Association. I am also a licensed practitioner forester. So I spend half my time dealing with the legislature and the other half in the forest uh, managing uh, the forest. Uh, I came to this committee meeting uh, with a lot of interest as to who you are um, and who you're adding. Um, I appreciated the, uh, in the conversation as far as uh, your desire to have someone from the forest products industry. I think it is very valuable. Um, I know you also want to talk about carbon, carbon trading and uh, things like that. Uh, I think it's more important that we try to focus as best we can on um, recognizing that our forest is, is absorbing the emissions that we create and uh, not so much as sell credit so that a plant on the other side of the 
country can pollute. Um, I was kind of disappointed. I testified on this bill in the House, was unable to in the Senate because of the pandemic. It was very limited um, access there. Uh, but uh, I was very concerned that we really had built into this law recognition of the, uh, the forest and what it does. Um, I've seen statistics where uh, 52%, and I've seen as high as 115% of our emissions are being sequestered today in our forests. Um, you know, it's, it's like, why can't we celebrate that? And why can't we count that? Uh, that's kind of one of the concerns I've had from the very beginning in this whole conversation. But um, I, I, I know Ben, uh, I think he's a good, good forester. I think he will be uh, helpful. Uh, but I had a bunch of other names that I think would be uh, even better for you uh, if you're interested. Um, ben does not uh, interact with the Vermont Forest Products Association, who I represent. Um, I certainly will talk to Ben to have him um, come to our meetings from time to time and explain where you're at. Uh, I'll, but I plan to monitor it uh, as much as as well as I can. Uh, but anyways, I just wanted to uh, find out who you all were, and uh, and just let you know I'm here in case you want to reach out to more members of the industry. We matter. Great, thanks Ed. And I think, you know, that's certainly our intent. Um, you know, we, we had to follow this process to get these seated members, but absolutely are, are open to hearing uh, from others and um, certainly will lean on your group for their expertise as we, we dig into some of these issues going forward. So thanks for joining us today and for your comments. I also just to address both of the public comments, thank you both for adding um, that valuable. Yeah, yeah, one more just so you know. Um, oh, let's Abby. get let's do that. OK, Cheryl, do you want to add your comment? Um, yes, hi, um, I want to also um, encourage uh, the elevation that Lauren had to increase the um, information about ecosystems and also encourage using forest and habitat connectivity and wildlands, not just working lands, as I think it was, was it Zach Porter that just said that? Um, and secondly, so I think that that's really important and to take also somebody who is involved in planning land, land use, um, which I don't think I saw on the list. Um, and unfortunately, I actually did look at the list myself and I don't think I saw my name on there. I actually not applied twice and I'm not sure why it wasn't on there. So I don't even need you to look at me again, um, but I, I kind of would like that. But um, to get somebody who's an ecologist and um, somebody on, on that's working on planning or landscape architecture plan, you know, in a, on a planning commission, regional planning. Um, it's really important that we bring planning into this ecosystems um, idea because that is, you know, the rural sprawl that's going on is really affecting greatly our carbon sequestration and the effectiveness of um, the forests. So. It's not just climate. I mean, it, it's climate. And a part of that is our lack of our losing biomass and biodiversity in all areas. And so it I feel that maybe you need to get somebody else in who is an ecologist or um, and a planner and somebody along the lines of that, not just working lands. That's about Great. it. Thank you, Cheryl, for that. And uh, we've got our, our project manager, Jane, on the call here. So I'm sure, um, you know, if you want to follow up with her about whether your name was submitted um, properly, you know, we can certainly get back to you on, on that. So sorry for any miscommunication there. Okay, thanks. All right. I um, think that is it for the hands up. Okay. I w I'll just add a final comment that, um, Thank you so much for all of the public comments. And I realize that um, 
this work is so close to all of our hearts, right? And this is our home and the land that we all share. And so we're all really passionate about how this work is carried forward. Um, I think that my personal hope, and I would like to sort of assure the members of the public that are on in this regard, I feel as a working farmer that often the perception of um, so many people is that their expertise or their one title is something that defines their entire experience. And so I've asked all the committee members to indulge me in this way of sharing with each other how we all show up to this table as whole people. But just so that I'm, I hope, helping alleviate some of that. For example, as a working farmer, um, you know, we steward a conservation easement of 300 acres and steward 500 acres total. Um, not all of which, for example, is working lands. That includes almost, uh, it includes far, double the amount of forest as it does open land, and that includes a ton of biodiverse and wild landscape as well. So I think I would love for this process to sort of help us all open up the understanding that we, none of us come to this table as um, one singular piece of experience or expertise, and that um, there, you know, my interest, for example, in ecosystem function is just as much tied up in how I farm as, as being defined as a farmer. And so I, you know, I'm hoping to move forward in the process in that capacity and bringing a really broad understanding of what all of this work is ahead of us. Lauren, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off with the hand raise there, though, Abby, if you want to keep going. Not you good. Go. Do, can, are we allowed to run over? Billy, Jane, Abby, the three of you? I say go for it. It's fine with me. OK, uh, I'll just note that um, since we had two of three public comments uh, wanting to elevate the, the ecosystems piece and the wildlands piece, that we should just as a subcommittee, as we look through this list, make sure that we're incorporating any of the ecologists whose names were submitted um, and put them on our our short list for targeted outreach or maybe as backups should any of the people that we reach out to uh, not no longer have time. And then one piece to Ed, Ed raised it a little bit in his public comment about the the difference between sequestration and storage and the need to do some uh, emissions based work. When we last met, we talked about um, ag and ecosystems taking the real lead on ag and forestry based emissions and kind of sending our recommendations over to cross-sector mitigation as well as our role in land use planning and where we would hope to see renewable energy siting located and so there's some pretty significant overlap between cross-sector mitigation and our work here and i know yesterday they met they requested that somebody from just transitions be on their subcommittee as well and i just think there might be there is a probable need that one of our subcommittee members also is over there just to make sure that we're cross-pollinating ideas. They have somebody from science and data as well. So precedent has been set um, and I'm willing I'm willing to do it. I would love to see anybody else do it as well, but I just wanted to flag that as as something that we should be considering as a group. Okay. I see a last last minute comment. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe that's something we all think on and come back to when we meet again next week. Then Ali, I see you got your hand up. Oh, I just was going to um, remind folks that Bob Zeno will be staff support for this committee, too, and he is an ecologist. Um, and also, you know, my background is more strongly in forest ecology and tree physiology. So I think, um, you know, between Bob and I um, and we have Bob Pop on um, as support, too, we do have quite a lot of ecological background um, uh, to support the committee, if that helps. It, it does. Mightily, thank you. And yeah, I think I, I just want to agree with you all that, you know, we're we went through an exercise today to round out certain seats in our committee, but that in no way implies that others aren't welcome and are needed and that, you know, folks won't have meaningful involvement going forward on a on a more ad hoc basis. And, you know, I think certainly, you know, as we discuss folks from the forest processing industry, other woodland owners you know, are going to be important voices at the table along with all that you just mentioned. So I think we're going, we're doing well. All right. Um, I'll, send, I'll send the notes out quickly because I know we have a short 
time frame to get those back to Melissa for posting. For okay. Abby, yeah, if, it's okay with, if it's okay with you, Abby, I'm fine to like send out an email that kind of put some potential meeting dates out there for next week to at least this group of subcommittee members and state of Vermont staff. And then, you know, if we get new folks on between now and then, great. But otherwise, we'll at least have something in the works for next week. I think that sounds like a wise plan. Everybody else cool with that? Yeah. OK. Thank you all so much for your time and thought in this regard. Thank you so much to members of the public for joining us and bringing forward your um, thoughtful comments. And I guess that's it for today. Yes. Final thoughts. Have a nice weekend, you all. All right. Have a good Thanks weekend. Everyone. Everyone. Have okay, a good weekend, you. everyone. Bye. Bye.